Hi, this is LCS16 for the Cure Game channel, and this is my video commentaries for the uh, Man of War gameplay number 3. This round was 4 against 4. My team was composed of Kyle, Great Dictator, and Derny, and we were the German against uh, the Japanese, who was composed of uh, random people. Being a game German against Japan made it a very uh, special game because both sides are very different. Germany is mostly about heavy tank and Japan is mostly about artillery and uh, fast moving infantry. So it's really a, an unusual match because you won't see many games where Germany and Japan face each other. And most games are actually uh, Russia against Germany. Since Russia is the only faction that as tank that can face German tank. Japan doesn't have such a powerful tank. That's why they will rely mostly on artillery and infantry, light armor and stuff like that. As Germany, I will use uh, during most of the match heavy infantry and uh, a panther as usual. The infantry for me is the main battle element because uh, with their uh, Panzer Faust uh, the Grenadier can really destroy any tank, so they serve me as the main battle force, while the Panther, uh, which I call later on, is mostly uh, as a support against any kind of tank or vehicle that may be around that are not heavy tank. And this Panther I call later on is mostly a distraction, so it's expendable resource in my mind. But let's get back to the gameplay video. Early on I spawned a, a motorcycle which will uh, allow me to uh, take control of the position early on without much resource wasted. And the enemy in front of me did not do much so it wasn't very hard and uh, I took control uh, very easily. I even was able to afford calling a wrong truck to transport my troop but turns out that I did not call the right one that show how rusty I am at this game. But the original idea was to uh, buy a truck to transport my uh, stormtrooper and bring them to the front faster. But since I called the uh, wrong truck, I gave up on that idea and told myself, well, those troops will just have to walk to the front. And anyway, I'm not much of a micromanager, so I will give up anyway, even if I had the right truck. On the other end, with that truck, I could have used some uh, special strategies with it, like deploying uh, the ammo it contained around the place and use them as explosive charge, which will have decimated enemy's troops. But at that time, I did not think about it, and it wasn't really a strategy which was certain to work, because the enemies were not too much attracted by my side for some reason, and it's only later on that uh, they tr they started to react to me. As for the rest of the battlefield, I think most of the action was happening in the center. It seemed most of the enemies were focusing their attention there, and there was a little fighting on the right side, but it wasn't too hard, it seemed, from my for my partners. And it's always very hard when uh, you see that the action is happening elsewhere, not to commit resource there. But at the same time, you should always consider that if you commit your troop to where the action is, the enemies may very well turn their eyes toward the position you are occupying now and uh, attack it and pierce your line and flank your friendly forces and shoot their flank and destroy everything. So sometimes even if you get no action, it's a good idea to keep your troop where they are even if you may never see any action there. I saw many games where one vehicle actually went through the flank and uh, destroyed many vehicles because people were not paying attention to that flank and they lost because of that. So it's very important to deploy your troop all along the front line and by deploying, I don't mean deploying a huge force. Sometimes just a small force can do the job. For example, since many people use fast moving vehicle to flank and destroy in the rear or flank your vehicle, it may be a good idea just to deploy a PTR on the flank because if a light armored vehicle 
is flanking a position, the PTR will be able to destroy it very easily and with good accuracy, unlike the bazooka or other uh, rocket launcher. Those flanking maneuvers are also why I have a tendency to choose heavy infantry such as the stormtrooper because uh, they have Panzer Shrek. They also have a lot of uh, heavy explosive grenade which can destroy tank. And those troops can actually uh, destroy anything that flank you fast. And uh, since they are very well on their own, you don't really need to support them much. They also individually can take on many enemy infantry. So if your enemies is actually flanking you with a full force, including infantry, your uh, stormtrooper or heavy infantry will be able to hold them uh, much better than other infantry such as riflemen or SMG infantry. Also spawning heavy infantry isn't very expensive considering I don't spend much point on heavy tank. So the points I don't spend on tank can go to my infantry and this means I can actually fight much longer than if I spend on one big tank which may very well be destroyed in one shot by a flanking enemy. So I really share the risk by having a lot of infantry. And part of sharing this risk means I actually expect to lose troop. So if you're the kind of player that doesn't like to lose stuff, you may not want to follow my approach to this game. Because you will likely lose a lot of people if you play like me. If you have an adversity against casualties, maybe you should go with the strategy of heavy tank. But that strategy is very risky also because if you lose your big tank, that's point that you won't recover and long term you may lose. So uh, this game is very flexible. You can really play your style. And actually uh, you can even play a lot with the artillery. I know that some people asked me to show me play artillery, but I'm really not the kind of player to use artillery. But in this game, you can actually see the other team, which use a lot of artillery. And on our side, there is Creek Dictator, which uh, seem to have a lot of fun blowing up the uh, Japanese artillery. But uh, I think artillery strategies is a little uh, dangerous, because like in this case, the artillery is not the weapon that push forward. It just destroys what is in front of him. So uh, the risk of artillery is to be surrounded and I think this is what happened later on in this game because uh, since they invest in artillery they don't invest in heavy tank and by not investing in tank they cannot push forward and they become surrounded and being surrounded in this game is a really bad idea because what make a tank strong is, uh, is armor and if you expose your flank, you can be destroyed in one shot. So it's very easy to lose your tank. And by using artillery, you cut yourself from being able to push the enemy. And you expose your flank long term. And it's very likely that uh, you will lose even if you outgun your enemies because you're just not able to push forward. In this game, the enemies also invested in uh, AT gun which are static gun, you can move them around, but uh, they won't be the kind of weapon you will use to attack your enemies. And in this case, it was a bad idea for them because a static uh, gun cannot attack. So it uh, just helped us to surround them and probably helped us to gain victory. So I will leave it here since I'm running out of time. I hope you enjoyed that commentary. Feel free to leave comment and keep your eyes open for future commentaries.